Well, today's a big day. Today's the day I go down to Eagle Point Hardware and I rent the trencher so I can cut these trenches for the electrical for this shed build. Oh man, I cannot wait. I'm going to be honest. I'm not looking forward to this at all. We've got some seriously tough clay soil. It's loaded with rocks. And I know trenchers like to catch on rocks. And you spend a lot of time forward and reverse and things like that. Trying to, you know, make progress. And I've got everything all told with the French drain. And with this, I've got about 225, 250 feet, somewhere in between there, of trench to cut. So, it's going to be in, an adventure. <laughs> I'm going down to uh, Eagle Point Hardware right now to pick that sucker up, getting ready to go. Uh, all the equipment that I've rented has come from them. Uh, it's three miles down the road from me. They got competitive pricing and uh, just the folks down there are good. Um, hashtag not sponsored. All this is coming out of my pocket and your donations. Thank you very much to everybody who's clicked those links down in the description and uh, donated a few dollars. I appreciate you guys more than you will ever know. You're uh, really helping this become a reality. So let me go grab my cup of coffee, jump in the Jeep, Head down, get this trencher. Yeah, let's go. The trencher itself was fairly easy to operate. The steering controls are real sensitive, so you have to be careful. But it still wore me out because the rocks in this soil would jam the chain. You'd have to reverse it and then come back with a shovel and dig it out. Also, the consistency of this clay soil, every time the trencher went back over dirt, it would compact it to the consistency of concrete. So, it took a while to dig all this trench, even with that machine. Then it came time to clean out the trench with a combination of the clamshell digger and a trenching shovel sometimes removing one rock at a time and cleaning it out so I could start laying PVC conduit. I laid out the cable, threaded the conduit onto that cable, and then started gluing the pipe together. Now in this freeze frame you can see a three-quarter inch diameter conduit that's a chase in case I need to pull more wire in the future. I also put another three quarter inch conduit in for internet cable. I filled the trench in with sand and then laid a warning tape letting someone in the future know that there's buried electrical lines. Then I was able to start backfilling with dirt, getting rid of large rocks in the process. This area is part of it's going to be gravel driveway, part of it's going to be lawn. I just don't know which is which right at the moment. So might as well get rid of the big rocks while I can. Well, the smoke appears to have cleared long enough for me to go ahead and get the road fabric laid down and then get ready to start moving gravel in here. I'll be using my wide crown pneumatic stapler to staple this road fabric to the perimeter of the pad and then go from there. I get to cut around the uh, conduit over here where the electrical line is coming up and I'm going to build a small wood box out of uh, 2 by 12 to go around that conduit so that when I put the gravel in and start compacting it it's protecting the conduit so the gravel doesn't burst through the sides of it. I just don't want any problems in the foreseeable future. So let me get going on this. 
Now the purpose of the road fabric is to keep the gravel from being compacted down into the dirt. I went ahead and I built the front edge of the perimeter off camera. That was just more drilling holes and driving stakes. Uh, installing the fabric was fairly easy. I just used rocks and 4x4s as weights to keep it in place while I stapled it. Then trimmed it up as I needed to. Then remove all my weights and move on to the next step. So that's it. This is where we stand today. As I record this, the wind has shifted a little bit, so the smoke is not so thick. I've been able to work for a couple, three hours a day, light work, but uh, it's still pretty bad, pretty smoky around here. So that's where we're going to end this video. In the next video should be the completion of this pad for the new shop shed. What I have left to do is install the dead man, which are the braces that will keep the perimeter from bowing out as I start adding gravel. I can get those added in, then get the gravel moved in, and then go get a plate compactor and compact that down. Lock that gravel in to one another nice and tight. As some of you may know, we've had some devastating fires here in Southern Oregon over the last couple of weeks now and construction equipment, construction supplies, construction materials are already starting to get scarce. They're going to be even more so. So that may mean I have to start moving gravel with wheelbarrow and shovel. If I have to do that, so be it. I would like to go down and rent a mini skid steer with the front end bucket on it but with the fires that ripped through the cities of phoenix and talent oregon and destroyed hundreds if not thousands of structures in those two cities the equipment is needed more out there to help these people clean up their property and try to begin the process of rebuilding those who can. I figure if it is available, they need it more than I do. If it's not available, I have no problem with it. If I have to start, you know, moving it with a shovel and wheelbarrow, so be it. I'll get it done. This is a luxury for me. We're talking about people who have lost everything that they have. Um, a couple people who we know personally. So their need is greater than mine. So what can you say? What can you do? You help when you can and you back off of your needs when you need to. I'd like to say on that subject, thank you to everybody who has reached out to me asking after me or my wife. We are perfectly safe. Our area was not touched. All of the fires moved away from us. Uh, it's still smoky as you can see, but it's better than it has been. And cross your fingers, we're supposed to be getting some rain soon. Hopefully by the time you see this, that will have already come to pass and that'll help those firefighters out. Yeah, heaven knows we need it. We need it bad. It's been a bad, bad fire year this year for everybody along the entire West Coast. So again, thank you to everybody who has reached out to me to see if we're doing okay. We are fine. Thank you. So if you'd like to keep following along with this series on my shop shed build, or the Vectric software, or any of the projects that I have in the works right now, uh, I do hope you'll subscribe to my channel. If you got anything out of this video in particular, I do hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Now, just as a reminder, today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session right here on my YouTube channel where we can discuss the shop shed, the reasons I'm doing some things and other reasons why I'm not doing other things. We can discuss the Vectric software. We can talk about CNC in general. We can talk about life, the universe, and anything. That's today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. 
So I hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Y'all take care.